Good morning, everyone. Come on in. Set yourself down. This morning, I'm going to start with reading a, a few verses before the passage that we're going to use uh, in the message. It's both a good call to worship and sets up the, the, the sermon for later. This is Colossians chapter 3, the first four verses. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Oh, dear Jesus, we thank You for giving Your life for us on the cross. We want to come to You today and just tell You how much we appreciate it. Help us to do that as we worship You, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray, saying together, Amen. Amen. First hymn today is going to be Jesus is Lord of All. I we'll have the lyrics up on the screen. You can also find this in the hymnal at number 296. 296, Jesus is Lord of All. Would you please stand with us? And if you're using the hymnal, we're going to do the first two stanzas. about us bringing our tribute, our gifts to the Lord. And yes, that does, for when we study the Old Testament, that does talk about bringing monetary gifts. It talks about bringing first fruits of our flocks if we were shepherds, first fruits of our crops if we were farmers. But it also talks about in the Old Testament that our tribute that we bring to God, the sacrifice that we bring to Him, is our praise both in singing and our praying. So that's why the way that we do our two major prayer times, we've divided them into ministry prayers and mission prayers. The mission prayer time that we'll have in a little bit is where we lift up to God efforts to carry the gospel to other people inside our church and around the world, everything in between. 
This first time, though, the ministry prayer is where we lift up what people are going through. People who are in need of God in any way. And we do things, if it's your first time with us or haven't been here in a while, uh, we do things a little bit different with this. Instead of me asking for prayer requests and then leading you in prayer, I don't like doing that. Because what happens a lot of times is that we will give prayer requests and use a few minutes to do that and then use a few seconds to pray. And for me, with my bad forgetfulness, I can't recall everything that people said. So instead, what I would like to encourage you to do is that I'll open the prayer time and then I'll look to you. And if there's someone that you would like for us to pray for, please just raise your hand and I'll, I'll recognize you. And just say, Father, would you please bless and, and, and tell the name and, and pray whatever else you want to pray in behalf, on behalf of that person. See, that's you helping me lead the prayer time. Okay? And don't worry, you won't make a mistake. And I'll help you if you need it. Let's pray. Father, your son Jesus is Lord of all. And we thank you that he is involved in our lives, not just, uh, not just on Sunday morning, but every moment, every day. And that, Lord, you honestly care about what we care about. Because, Lord, really the reason we care about it is because you care about it. Because you put your heart and mind within us. It's an awesome gift and we thank you. Lord, we want to take some time right now to lift up, dear Lord, people who are in need and to ask you to bless them. I want to start, Father, by asking you to to please bless Glenn Clayton with healing, Father, for his back. Now, are there others that you would like to lead us in prayer for? Yes. Um, dear God, please be with my sister. She fell and broke her hip. She's in the hospital in Hagerstown now, and then she'll either stay there for therapy or go to a nursing home. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Anyone else? Back there? Thank you. Rose, would you mind repeating what, what that prayer was? And, uh, okay. So you're just a little bit quiet. Dear Lord, everybody's asking for prayers for Dakota. And um, dear Lord, I also ask for prayers for Loretta and for our families. Yes. And be with Frankie. And dear Lord, just help us need the heal and the infection to go away. Amen. Thank you. Yes, Donna. Dear Lord, please be with the great family and bless them as um, their son, their brother, their father. Husband Chris Grapes went to be with you last night, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just give them some understanding and just be with them. And I know they are all Christians and they're leaning on you. And I, I praise you and thank you for that. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else want to lead us in prayer? Anyone else that's in need of God's blessing? Father, I thank you for being with Sarah. Thank you for her continued healing. Thank you, Lord, that she was here last week, but I thank you, Lord, that today she walked in this sanctuary. Praise be to you. Anyone else you want to lift up in prayer? Yes. Praise God. <laughs> for saving me, my car died, and he came to, came to the rescue, and now we're going to Amen. Praise God. Yeah, thanksgiving and praise is also fair game during this time. Anybody else have anything you'd like to pray about? And well, I'm just right now that they sell you and just recovery with his knee and be with me and Debbie both as they are going through this. And I thank you that Greg was able to get out and sing this weekend and his first outing and he feels good and strong and we just thank you and praise you for his healing. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Father. We know that you already know about all these needs and you're already working on them. We also thank you, Lord, that you would give such as us the privilege of participating in this healing work with you by placing our faith in you and asking for your blessing. It's in Jesus, your son's name we pray, saying together, amen. Before you stand up to sing the next hymn, I'm going to go nerd on you. I want to tell you a little bit about this song first. It's Search Me, O God, and if you use hymnals, that's all the few of you are, it's at 297, 
And the reason I'm going to do this little uh, explanation is that when I was looking at the tune here in the hymnal, I can kind of semi-read music, not, not a musician, but I can kind of read it. I said, wait a minute, that's not the tune that I'm familiar with. Because the tune that I'm familiar with, and I realize this may not be familiar to a lot of you, but the tune that this song that I heard Search Me of God set to was called either the Maori Farewell Song or in the late 1940s, a popular hit by Bing Crosby called Now Is The Hour. Now is the hour. That's about the best thing I can do. So anyway, it was set to that. But this is not that tune. And frankly, at least for me, the tune in the hymnal is a lot harder to sing. Now in a moment, I'm going to ask Heather to play through it one time to help you with it. I think that tune's a lot easier. Now the reason this made me kind of scratch my head is that if you're looking in the hymnal, you'll see at the bottom of the hymn, 297, it says that the words were written by J. J. Edwin Orr, and he lived in the 20th century. Well, the back story to this is that J. Edwin Orr was a Baptist evangelist, and at the age of 24, he was conducting revival services in New Zealand, and he heard the Maori, M-A-O-R-I, native tribe of New Zealand, heard the Maori farewell song to him. And he just felt inspired to write Search Me, O God, to that tune. But it says here that the tune that we have in the hymnal was written by somebody before that, back in the 19th century. So that's why we have this other, other tune. That and two dollars and something will get you a soda pop somewhere. <laughs> but I just want you to understand, it's a little interesting thing. Uh, God's Word is the number one book for us to study, okay? This hymnal ain't bad either. There's <laughs> a lot of good stuff in that. So if you want to follow along here, uh, search me up, God. I'm going to ask Heather to uh, play through it, and I'll sing through the first stanza. Then I'll invite you to stand, and we'll sing the first two stanzas together. But right now, just be seated.
be seated. I stepped away from this and, and sang with you off the screen because I wanted to hear how you were doing with that. You said you very good. This is our mission prayer time now, and this is where we focus on asking God to bless our efforts to take the gospel to other people. And that starts right here in our own church. You know, everything that we do in this church, even as seemingly non-evangelistic as it may be, it really is. It's all about taking the good news of Jesus Christ to other people. So after Abby leads us, I'm going to ask you to please lead us in asking God to bless efforts within the church and to all around the world, missionaries you may know or ministries or people needing to know Christ, just like what we did with the ministry prayer. So Abby, let me get ready for you. We're continuing today with our uh, focus on North American missions. And one of the ways that we give to our Annie Armstrong Easter offering is we collect plastic eggs or we have Easter eggs to give. <clears throat> so I have my Easter eggs. If anyone would like an egg to collect your change or your money in during our uh, Annie Armstrong time, I have an egg for you. It's just kind of a fun little way to, to uh, remind us of Annie Armstrong. And we're going to hear a story or some news from a North American missionary. And these missionaries today are from uh, the Boston area. And they are Victor and Ludmilla Mora. Okay. Avery and I usually collect or connect at some point before this, but we haven't connected. There, we got it.
was a little windy, but we had uh, just a real nice day. A uh, lot of school supplies given out, gospel presentations, so it was a very nice day. And we are planning an Easter egg hunt the Thursday before Easter. Uh, and that will be in the evening, 6 to 7 o'clock. And we're going to have a little meeting. We're still having a meeting right after the worship service today. Just briefly, if you'd like to help with that or want some more information. And we will be collecting uh, candy or uh, a monetary donation if you would like to give to support that. So uh, if you'd like to do that, stay after for just a brief meeting today. And uh, we're continuing with our Troy's basketball ministry, which will continue this week. So he's been having a good turnout with that 10 to 12 to 15 boys. So uh, we want to remember that. And we will be having our park and pray this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And that is a perfect time to pray over the basketball ministry, for us to pray over the church. Uh, and it's just, it's nice to be in the parking lot to do that, just to be, be close to the church. And not that it matters where we are, but it just gives us more of a connection, kind of a closeness. So that's 6 o'clock this Wednesday in the parking lot. So let's pray together for our missions and ministries. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we focus on North American missionaries. I, I pray for these missionaries. I pray for the Moras. I pray for their ministry in Boston to these Brazilians that is just so amazing that there are so many of them there. I pray that they can reach the young people there. And I pray that the young people who accept you will become strong leaders in that church and strong leaders in, in your body. Lord, I pray for the ministries here. Thank you for the good week we had last week with our winter carnival. I pray now for our Easter egg hunt. I just pray for a blessing on, on anybody who will attend, the helpers, the workers, the presentations, our, our school supplies, just that you will receive all the glory for that and, and seeds will be planted for you. And our basketball ministry and all these boys that have been attending, I just pray a blessing on them. And um, so lead us into the ministries and the outreaches that you would have us to do, the things that would bring honor and glory to you. And that lost people will find you through what we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Andy. As we continue to pray, I'd like for you to be thinking about mission efforts, efforts to take the gospel to people, and uh, lead us in prayer with that. I'll start off with one thing. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the missionaries around the world that you have given us a partnership with through the Southern Baptist Cooperative Program across North America and all throughout the world. We thank you, dear Lord, for the missions opportunities that you've given us right here within the shadow of the church building. And thank you for how you've blessed with that. Thank you, Father, that you have shown us a way to do these things in the days of COVID, still adhering to best safety practices, but yet you have made a way for us to share Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. And I personally thank you, Father, for the people of this church and how they have kept the spirit of unity and in an issue that could just divide people, Lord, they have not allowed that to happen. Instead, they have done what it takes. Please continue to bless us and protect us, dear Lord, from the attacks of the evil one. And Father, as we enter probably the last phase of this transitional interim pastorate that you blessed me to have with Second Baptist, pray, Father, would you please bless the church's music committee as they're preparing to meet and to talk about the transition of uh, me no longer being the, uh, the song leader. I enjoy it, Father, but I'm not going to be here forever. <laughs> There's other folks. Lord, call them to you. There's more that we have to do in order to have a more diversified music worship, one that will be understandable to the people who don't know Christ that will come in from the community. 
please God as Father in, in, in doing that. And now, Lord, would you please hear us as we lift up other ministries, both in the church and outside of the church, to you at this time. Is there anything that anyone would like to lead us in prayer for about taking the gospel to, to other folks? Rose? Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? It's in Jesus' name that we pray, saying together, Amen. You're going to hear me repeat this phrase a lot, and it's because I think it's important. I think it's it marks a, a real my, milestone in the history and the future of Second Baptist Church. It's what Troy said on a, a Sunday morning here a few Sundays ago, that everything that we do from here on out at Second Baptist Church is going to have two things about it. It's going to be bathed in prayer, and it's going to have an intentional presentation of the Gospel. You all are sticking to that, and I guarantee you God will reward that. He will. For the three Sundays, uh, we talked about who is God the Father, and who is God the Son, and who is God the Holy Spirit. Well, why do we need them so much? Today, our main passage will be Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. I think in the black Bible there in the, in the pew, that's page 1834, if I remember correctly. Page 1834, Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. God wrote the letter to the Christians, Christians at Colossae, the Colossians, through Paul about 10 years after his first letter to the church in Corinth. Colossae is located in the southwest corner of modern-day Turkey, about 400 miles to the east across the Aegean Sea from Corinth. Now, if you remember from that series that we did on 1 Corinthians, in Corinth there were some wrong ideas that threatened to derail Christianity. 400 miles to the east and a decade later in Colossae, more wrong thinking was standing a threat or danger of doing the same. In uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. Let me read the first part again. That's a lot of words. Sometimes Paul gets real professorial. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the tradition of men. Do we not face that same danger today? Think about what we have done to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. How much have we watered down and downplayed what sin is? And I'm saying that with eight fingers pointed at me if I'm pointing two at you. How much have we downplayed this? You know, everybody sins, we know that, so it's not fair to single me out. And it's not fair to say that I'm wrong because who can live up to the perfect standard of God anyway? Look what we have done to Romans chapter 3, chapter 6 rather, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. And death in that verse means eternal separation from God. We old timers have got a simple one word description of that. It's called hell. Or if you're from North Carolina, it's hail. <laughs> Have we downplayed that? Yeah. Why is it now that for every person, follower of Jesus or not, when they die, you hear people say, he or she is in a better place. I'm sorry, if they're not a follower of Jesus Christ, they are not in a better place. Look what we've done to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. We have dethroned God from His rightful place. For by grace you have been saved through faith, 
And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. What we have done is say that I hope that I have enough good works to outweigh my bad works enough to get me into heaven. In other words, we put trust in our works and in ourselves instead of the gift of Christ. And yet, we fully expect God to come through on His promise in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 8. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. Folks, something's wrong. Let's get it right. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God, and I want to stop there just for a moment. The wrath of God is something I think I downplay. I think that we all downplay. Because we want to center on the love of God, and we must never forget the love of God. But you know what makes the love of God so special and so good and so wonderful? The wrath of God. And what is the wrath of God? There are many, many verses we could go through throughout the Bible. I'll simply refer to Revelation chapter 14, where the wrath of God is used to describe God's judgment upon the world at the end of time. And in that place in the scripture, Revelation 14, it connects with the wrath of God ideas such as fire, brimstone, the smoke of their torment lasts forever, and never the rest. The wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. Verse 7, And in them you also once walked when you were living in them. But now you also put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him, a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and er uncircumcised. That's a way of saying circumcised, Jewish, uncircumcised, everybody else. Barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free man. I looked at that and I understood that part about Greek and Jew. I understood about circumcised and uncircumcised. I struggled with this next section, so I decided to dig into it a little bit more deeply. Scythians were a nomadic people. That means that they didn't set up towns or whatever. They were tent dwellers. They moved from place to place to place. And they, they lived in the area around the Black Sea. So if this is Israel... We're talking about an area way off this way. Okay? Dug into it a little bit more deeply. You're wondering, when are, when are we going to get his Greek geek moment of the moment of the, of the day? Here it is. In the original Greek language of the New Testament, there is no word and in barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free man. This is something that has been added by English translators in order for us to try to, to make it make more sense in the English language. But even that, if you go back to the King James Version, the word there is not and, it's nor. So I don't think they're setting up this Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised. Here I think it runs all together and they're saying barbarian, Scythian, slave, free man. In other words, whoever you want to talk about, but Christ is all and in all. The first thing that we need to do in order to get it right, I believe, is to know who we are without following Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 says, The old self with its evil practices. Well, what is the old self? 
Let's see what God says. Look at verse 5. He uses these words to describe us, to describe any human being before Jesus becomes our life. Verse 5. Immorality, impurity, passion, the wrong kind of passion, evil desire, greed, idolatry. Verse 6. Under the wrath of God, sons of disobedience. Verse 7. In them you also once walked. That used to be the way that you, you did everything. When you were living in them, that was the way that you lived. Verse 8, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech. Verse 9, lying to one another, evil, evil practices. Verse 10, it talks about being renewed to a true knowledge. So before Jesus, we live according to a false knowledge. And in verse 11, distinctions among people. And I think what this is getting at here is what we would call today prejudice. Are we really that bad? Yes! God said so. The second step or part of getting it right is for us to come to Christ to become, as it says in chapter 3, verse 10, the new self who is being renewed. Look at some phrases in these verses. Verse 5, Therefore consider the members of your earthly body as dead to. In verse 8, But now you also put them all aside. In verse 10, and excuse me, verse 9, since you laid aside the old self, and verse 10, and have put on the new self. The important point here is this. This is doable only in Jesus Christ. I don't care how good you think you are, you cannot reform yourself from the old self that we just looked at into the new self. You just can't do it. It's part of our fallen nature that we inherited from our great, 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 I don't know how many more greats I gotta do. Granddaddy Adam. We can't do it. It can only be done in Christ. And that brings us to the third part or the third step of getting it right. And that is becoming who following Christ makes us to be. Going back to Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, And have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the one who created him. You want to know a marvelous thing? And Avery, this is not in the PowerPoint. I'm going to go off the reservation just for a second. You want to know a marvelous thing? From the moment that you came to Jesus Christ and said, would you please be my Lord and Savior? I want to follow you. That ever since then, God has been at work in and on you, renewing you, recreating you in the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. Are there things about you that you just can't stand? God's working on them. Praise God. Are there things where you say, I can't believe that I did that again? Take heart. God is working on them. Now, back to the PowerPoint and the, uh, the reservation. It is this true knowledge, what God says, not what we say, that convinces us that yes, we should be punished for falling short of the glory of God. And yes, there is a hell awaiting those who do not become followers of Jesus Christ. And no, we do not stand a chance of getting into heaven based upon who we are and what we do. But this true knowledge of God also convinces us of, convinces us of this, that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from any unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. That in my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 6. 
and that God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Let me take one of the things that was dealt with here in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11, the, the difference between the old self and the new self, the difference from before Jesus becomes your life as compared to what happens after he becomes your life, and this business about making distinctions among people, and I said prejudice. Well, it got me to thinking about something that had happened a long time before even this letter to the Colossians was written. It happened 4,000 years ago. And it happened at a place that was called Babel. Some of you people that grew up learning the Bible stories, you may remember this as the Tower of Babel. But I don't like to call it a story because people think stories are fables. This is not a fable. It actually happened. You know, God saw what the people at the city of Babylon were doing. And he came down. They were all speaking the same language at that time. Can you imagine what that would be like? And he confused their languages and he scattered them abroad over all the earth. Now why would God do such a thing? Genesis chapter 11 verse 4, the people of Babel, they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. And let us make for ourselves a name. Otherwise, we will be scattered abroad across the face of the earth. Before that, to the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God told them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. You see what's happening here? The people at Babel set aside God and His will for themselves and His will. Therefore, they sinned. Therefore, God took action. He passed judgment. We set aside God, and I say we, including your preacher. We set aside God and His will in favor of ourselves and our will, sin. And God has taken action. He passes judgment. You want to know what's wrong with the world today? Duh! The judgment has already begun. And it's going to get worse. You can delve into that another time. But I'm not going to leave you there with that. Here's the cool thing. God took action in another way too. Let me get to that the slide that's got the, the circle and all that stuff on. We are messed up. Because we are messed up, it messes up all of our relationships. The arrows. With all of us being messed up, it gives us a messed up world. And we are under the wrath of God. There's no future for this world. But I think that in Colossians chapter 3, verse 11, when it says that a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and freeman, but Christ is all and in all, we find the remedy that came along thousands of years later to what happened in Babel. We find the remedy for what was wrong with those people whenever they set aside God and set aside His will. We find the remedy for when they sinned. And we also find the remedy for us today. We find the remedy for us setting aside God and His will. We find the remedy for our sin. We find the release from God's judgment and wrath. 
Christ is all and in all. And friends, this is why we need God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit so much. Will you be honest with God today about how messed up you are? And ask His Son Jesus to become your Lord. Will you become His follower? And if you've already done that, will you be honest with God today about areas where you still mess up? Areas in which still you are living the old self, still sinning, still setting aside Him and His will? And beg Him to renew you according to the new self to make you more in the image of Christ where Christ truly is all and in all. Now, we're not yet to the point with COVID that we're doing our traditional altar call where I would stand at the front and while we sing, I would ask you if you would like to respond to this to come forward and tell me. But please do tell me after church. I've got time for you. And if you want to wait until you get home, my contact information is, uh, it should be here. Yeah, there it is. My phone number, 301-876-2484. It's on your bulletin. Please, please do contact me. Right now, as a, a body of believers together in the church, that's a way of explaining the fancy term corporately. We'll respond to God by singing, I live for Him. This is hymn number 298 in the hymn. Would you please stand, please? I live for Him, 298. Salary and the benefits that go with it. 
we kind of uh, set it up as a June through December amount, thinking, not knowing, of course, but thinking that, you know, the earliest would be June that we'd have a pastor in here, but that could change, you know, as the year goes through. So just take it home, look at it, and uh, that leads me to my next uh, announcement. Uh, I spoke with Kenny about this, and the search committee has talked about it during our meetings. We have uh, some candidates that are like bivocational pastors, so we felt it would be necessary uh, to put together a little, uh, not necessarily a training, but information uh, portion of our service for next Sunday, uh, strictly on bivocational pastors. And uh, uh, Kenny's going to put together something, I'm going to meet with him, and we'll present it uh, next Sunday at our service in that respect. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, there has been bivocational pastors applied for our position, and we want to make the church aware of it. And certainly, if you can make it next week, you know, come and listen and learn a little bit. And people on, you know, YouTube that view us uh, also, you know, catch up, you know, when that's posted on our YouTube channel. So, uh, that's all I have. So what this means is that uh, God's getting us closer to calling the pastor. One thing. Uh, I had hoped to bring in Vernon Beecham, who lives over at Fort Ashby. Vernon is a Mid-Atlantic representative of the Southern Baptist Bivocational and Smaller Church Leadership Network. Someone you've heard before preach here at this church. Good old friend of ours that's lived here longer than I have. Uh, Vernon did come and talk about bivocationalism with the Pastor Search Committee. I'd hope to have him come in to do this. However, Vernon is about to start an interim pastor and a pastor at another Second Baptist Church, the one in Kaiser. So he's not available. However, I've asked him to send me some notes about, well, Kenny, make sure that you say this. But uh, I think that we're at a point we need to talk about this. So next Sunday, this is what you can expect. Totally independent of this, but God knows how to put things together even when we don't. Margie has prepared for us a video presentation and music and scripture lasts about five minutes that we're going to use that at the very beginning of the service next week. That will be our call to worship instead of me reading scripture and praying. We will go into at that time season of prayer where we will combine both the ministry and the missions prayer time. After that, we'll sing a song together, and then instead of me preaching a sermon like today, we'll start talking about bivocationalism. And my intention with this is not only to present things to you, but also to give you an opportunity to talk as well. Uh, we have found in this transitional interim passport process that I've been blessed to be with you in since the 1st of July, that we have really been blessed whenever we have talked about these kinds of issues about, you know, who are we, what's our community like, what's our mission. When we've talked about that together on Sunday morning, God has really blessed that. So I think this is a time that we need to do that again. So that's what you can expect next week. Uh, we are looking at no more than an hour, and it's like what we do in normal worship time, and then we'll close at the end with a hymn and announcements. So if you would like to know more before next Sunday, uh, feel free to talk to Larry or me. Uh, be glad to share what we know, what little we do know. We're seeking God's will along with you. And I'm excited about what God's doing and, frankly, about you all getting to wrestle with this issue. Just like uh, Jacob wrestled with the man of God on Mount Peniel back in the Old Testament, and God blessed him, although it did hurt to go through that wrestling match, I think there's times that God calls us individually and as churches to come wrestle with Him. And it may be uncomfortable, but oh, the blessing that comes out of it. So that's next Sunday. And Easter Sunday is coming. We're working on that. Okay. When I do know this much, I'm going to preach on the Lord's Supper uh, Easter Sunday morning, and we're going to observe it. Okay. Troy, you got something for us, brother. Come on. Reiterate a little bit.
bit what Abby said about our basketball ministry. And Kenny kind of asked me to talk about it too. We've had a very good turnout so far. We've had uh, 15 kids and 16 kids and then I think it was 10 the third time that we had it. But we've actually just got permission as well at the business meeting to have it on Mondays and Wednesdays. So I will need some additional help. I would like to have three adults there as a minimum each time that I have it. And I've had some good help from my family and Miss Abby and Donna and Larry. And we've had a nice turnout from the kids, and I feel like they've been very receptive. I mean, we'll play for about an hour, and then we'll have five, ten minute conversation with them about the gospel, about whatever, whoever feels led to lead the kids in that evening, and pray with them, and get back to playing. They have a good time. Um, they sit separately. And what, I guess, in my mind, I've seen is that those kids that are sitting down that are not currently playing, I would love for us to just be out there talking to them. They're, they're young men. They are looking and searching all over the place, really, for what we can give them, for what Jesus can give them. And that's, that's all it's about, is that just give them talk to them. Let them know, like, hey, we love you, we care about you. There are more people in this church than just four or five that want to come and listen to you on Monday or Wednesday night. We have a whole church body here that would love to speak to you. And remember, our mission statement now at Second Baptist Church is connecting communities to Christ, and we really, really need to be intentional about that. So in addition to the basketball, if you're interested in helping with the Easter egg hunt, I think we're having that meeting right now. So, thanks, guys. Anyone else has got an announcement? Anybody else got an announcement? You have an Oh, you said Your announcement is Bob Bob. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. Yes. Everybody pray for Troy. He hurt his knee playing basketball. Now, maybe that's to keep him talking to the boys because he's good at that. But he likes to play, too. Going okay. once? Oh, you got one? Going twice? Soul America! God bless you. Have a good day. <laughs>